So far, all the data definitions we've seen have been built out of kinds of data that we already know about. Strings, numbers, even posits. We've defined our own data definitions, but not our own kinds of data. Also, we've only seen one kind of data that packages multiple things. The posit designed to hold x and y coordinates. But what if we want to package other kinds of things together? In this lecture, we'll see how to define our own kinds of data that can combine whatever pieces we want. This is called structures. We're going to start with a simple example, an address. If we want to define a data definition for an address, we'll begin like this. As with all the other data definitions we've seen in this class, we will start as an address is, and then we need to write something here. We need to write how to construct an address. An address might contain two pieces of information. For example, a house number and a street. And we're going to put those two pieces of information together to form an address. Those two pieces of data together, and we'll use a function that we're going to make up called make address. So we'll define our data definition like this. Make address number, that's for the house number, string, that's for the street name. Now, where did the make address function come from? Does Dr. Racket already know about it? Is it built into the beginning student language? That can't really be, because we just decided to make it up. So we have to tell our program and Dr. Racket that we want to have a make address function, and that we want it to take two inputs, which are supposed to be numbers and strings. We're going to do that with the define struct form. It'll look like this. The define struct form has two parts after the word define struct. First, address. That's the name of the structure. Second, it has in parentheses all of the pieces of the address. Here, number and street. Those are the names of the two different fields of the address structure. Once we've written this out, we can click the Run button and we can start using the Make Address function. Let's try using it. We'll create an address for Luddy Hall, which is 700 North Woodlawn Avenue. It goes like this. Make address 700 Woodlawn Avenue. Note that I have, as usual, put parentheses at the beginning and the end. You can also see that Dr. Racket already knows how to print addresses just like we typed them in. Let's try another address. That's the address for the White House. Now, it's great to be able to put pieces of data together, but what if we want to take that data apart again? What if we want to get out the 700 from Luddy Hall? It turns out that when we write define struct, we get more than just the make address function. We also get some other functions, in particular functions to extract the pieces of data inside the address. If we want to get out the number from an address, we use the address-number function. It works like this. We write address number, and we provide an address, like the address of Letty Hall. And then, lo and behold, that gives us back the address number for Letty Hall. It works great for the address of the White House as well. To get the street name, we use the address street function. It works very similar. Each of these functions is necessary to get out the respective pieces of data. Now we've seen how to write addresses, but we can define structures for whatever we want. 
consider points in space. We might make them up of x and y coordinates. That's exactly what posons do. Posons are built into Dr. Racket and beginning student, but they really don't have to be. Let's consider the example of a point structure that has the same x and y coordinates that posons do. Here's the data definition for a point structure. It says we're going to construct points with the make point function, and that's going to take in two numbers as inputs. Here's the defined struct that goes along with that point data definition. It says that our structure is named point, and it has two fields named x and y. This structure is just like Poisson's. It has x and y fields. They're both numbers. It's just called point instead of Poisson. Let's create some points in the interactions window, and we'll see that they work very similarly to the way addresses work. There's two points. Dr. Racket again already knows how to print out points. Just as we did with addresses, we can extract the components of points as well. Here we're going to extract the components of points with the point-x and point-y functions. If we create a point with a x-coordinate of 1, point dash x will produce 1. If we create a point with a y-coordinate of 20, point dash y will produce 20. Those are the basics of creating, defining, and accessing values using structures. We'll use structures lots more in the rest of this lecture and in the whole rest of the course.